the Allies are preparing an invasion on the north coast of France. How long away? Four weeks. Four weeks. We need all hands on deck. They have Alfred. Talk to us. That's an exciting look at the future of X Company. The Second World War spy drama makes its return to CBC Television tonight at 9 p.m., kicking off a second season of Chaos and Espionage. I'm joined now bright and early by Dustin Milligan and Evelyn Brochu, two stars, two of the stars of X Company. Thanks mm -hmm. for getting up bright and early and joining us. We're looking forward to the new season kicking off. Dustin, I want to start with you. Uh, you were bleeding in pretty bad shape, if I recall, last uh, time we saw you. Yes, indeed. Yeah, shot right in the gut. So how are things going? Does it pick up right from there? Are you still bleeding as we kick off season two? Yeah, I think it's it's like 11 hours. The the uh, the new season starts, I think, 11 hours after the events okay. from uh, the last episode of the first season. Uh, and indeed, my character Tom uh, is in very, very rough shape. Uh, luckily, he's got some pretty, pretty together teammates to uh, <laughs> take care of him, at least. That's what we hope happens. Yeah, exactly. And poor Alfred, he's been captured. Alfred, if you haven't seen it yet, he's a nervous guy with this incredible memory. So this is not going to be good because he's in the hands of the Gestapo, right? Indeed, yeah. I, I, we also know that he's been uh, been captured, and that's with Evelyn's character. Uh, she uh, kind of dropped the ball there in the last season, unfortunately. Let her heart get in the way. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and because of the softer side of her, right? Exactly. But because of his perfect memory, now we can't trust anyone anymore. Mm -hmm. All our safe houses, all our contacts. So we're trying to save this guy's life, but we have, um, you know, we have no resources to, to do so. So the level of, of, of danger uh, is really elevated because of that. It does sound like it's going to get more dangerous, possibly yeah. more violent. And I gather you even said, you know, it's going to be darker this season. What should we expect? Exactly. I think we're going to get to know the characters on a deeper level. Uh, we're going to get to see a darker side of them. I think everybody's hands got dirty. We're not as fresh faced. The team is not as green anymore. And I think even the look of the show reflects that. Um, I think it's still going to be as beautiful and cinematic. But as last year, it was a bit glossy. I think this year is going to be a bit more raw, a, a bit more, um... No, that's right, like yeah. rough around the edges. I think yes. that's the whole idea yeah. is that we're, where things were, I think, idealized in the first season, uh, now the reality of, of what we're actually uh, right in the middle of mm -hmm. as a team in World War II, it's, it's totally coming uh, right to a head for us. Yeah. And again, the very opening minutes of, of this episode, uh, we were pretty much running at 11. 12, 13 <laughs> out of 10. Yeah. Well, and you mentioned idealized, and because I know at the beginning of this uh, season one, it, it was an idealized group hoping to go and change the world. And one of the things I love about this is that this is based on the story of a true spy camp, really, uh, in Ontario. So a little piece of Canadiana there as well that we're learning about through your show. I want to ask you both about how your characters will evolve this season. First, let's take a look, a reminder of where they are at the start of season two. Tom's not getting on this plane. Do you want to explain that? He said a plane was on its way, but they didn't say they were sending it for him. Why else would they send a plane? To make a drop. Small shadow. It's a parachute. To drop what? I can't say. Ah, oh, the suspense. Well, Wait. as we mentioned, Justin, you're in dire straits there. Not looking too good, although that was an e probably an easy shoot for you, just lying around. That was actually my very first day <laughs> coming back for the season two, and I will be honest, uh, it was pretty cozy. Kind of <laughs> kind of drifted off a couple times. <laughs> there, you're That's great. You. You're great in that scene uh, <laughs> from what I just saw, because that was the first time I've actually been awake <laughs> during it. Uh, but yeah, no, indeed, Tom's looking pretty rough. Well, tell yeah. me about Tom, because this is going to be a, maybe a wake-up call for him, because he came into this pretty idealized, it seemed, you know, and a guy with an advertising background hoping to change the world. Now he's been shot. He's seen some pretty gritty things. He has, he has killed. How do you see his character evolving at a, at a deeper, perhaps darker level this season? Well, I think inevitably, yeah, the fact that he has taken a life and then his own life has been, you know, and is sort of hanging in the balance there, I think that really has shook uh, his, his beliefs and, and uh, his perspective going into the war. Because indeed, as you said, uh, his advertising background, you know, he's, he's creating propaganda prior to joining this team. Mm -hmm. And I, I think in a lot of ways now he's realizing that, you know, there is a real truth to war. And what he was putting forward with these propaganda messages and that kind of stuff probably, you know, it's, it's completely unrealistic uh, as to what's actually happening. And now he's got to face that. And I think throughout the entire season, that affects him in, in a big way, and 
inevitably, because the team is so interlinked, uh, you know, his change in perspective then starts to affect the dynamic of the rest of the team as well. Mm -hmm. And he really, I think, so it solidifies for Tom what he, what he really believes in and what he wants to do and hopes to get out of, uh, you know, if not at the very least get out alive, but get out of the war. Evelyn, what about you? What's in store for Aurora? We just got a little hint of it there that she has a secret, clearly. Yeah, she's, she's burdened. She's definitely burdened. I think all the characters um, just went through things that they can't undo, saw things that they can't unsee, and how they're going to pull through carrying that weight. I, I, I think for Aurora is how do you lead a, t a team into battle when you're having trouble fighting your own inner battles? And I think in terms of the team, um, you were talking about the strain that all of our realities, um, you know, how it, they all um, affect one another. I think uh, how can you fight for, for world peace when you're ha having trouble maintaining solidarity between five people? So yeah. I think that's what season two is going to be about. I want to ask you about the shoot for this season. Four months of the production in Budapest, which must have been lovely, and then the season finale moving to Dieppe's beaches. I touched on the, on the real-life connection to this story and the, the Canadian spy camp, and now here you are shooting your finale on Dieppe's beaches. What was that like for you to be there? How, how, how heavy was the weight of history as you were shooting? I mean, it, it was, to be honest, yeah, that was, like I think, our last three days of shooting before we all went home, and uh, it was surreal. Um, you know, when you're actually there on the beaches, uh, first of all, the Canadian flags that are just everywhere in Dieppe uh, really gives you immediately like a sense of the importance of, of what our country did. Mm. Uh, and, you know, every nation that was, you know, a part of that mission, that horribly, horribly uh, uh, failed mission. And then that's what you really realize when you get there and you see these cliffs and you see these beaches that it's just like, how, how did they ever think that this was possibly going to work? Um, and it's 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 devastating to be honest, and and it, it was uh, an eerie an eerie couple of days. It was beautiful, uh, which was a, a strange contrast to, again, this dark history uh, wow. that was right underneath our feet. I can imagine. I know a bit of what you're talking about. I've been to Juno Beach, and Evelyn, mm -hmm. you're you're very much aware of, of walking in the steps of former Canadians, aren't you? Totally. I'm. I'm. I feel when. Doing this show, I mean, we're always responsible of carrying a story, and, 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 but when it, actu when it actually happened and affected lives, it, it sort of humbles you and it gives an extra layer of importance to what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And I think we, we all felt that all the way through, I mean, the second season and hopefully a third one. Yeah. We look forward to it at 9 o'clock tonight. Dustin, quick question for you before we let you go. But some people are watching and saying, I'm, I'm confused by the beard, but is that the, sh the guy from Schitt's Creek who plays the vet? <laughs> <laughs> And it is. <laughs> I'm sorry. First of all, I'm sorry to all the viewers that are confused by the beard.